A Diva's Christmas Carol Retrospective The year 2000 The unofficial first year of the new millennium. The year 2000 is known for the release of PlayStation 2. It was the peak of the music industry when CDs cost almost $20 a pop. It was the last year of Keenan and Kel. The year Chicken Run and El Dorado were released. It was a year I saw Alan Iverson play in person, back when we still had to roll up car windows manually. During the holiday season, Hollywood cashes in on the opportunity to make content centered around Christmas. When you think of Christmas movies from the early 2000s, a couple of movies come to mind. 2000 is mainly relegated to the Jim Carrey version of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. 2000 also brought us an underrated TV movie titled A Diva's Christmas Carol. I can remember being a young kid when this movie first came out and watching it in my parents' room. This movie scared the daylights out of me as a young child, especially the part when Marley came back from the dead. I also remember being scared when Ebony saw her dead body in the future. This was a movie I was probably too young for, but I can remember instantly falling in love with. A Diva's Christmas Carol is a VH1 original movie that aired on December 13, 2000. The VH1 version modernizes the classic Charles Dickens story, A Christmas Carol, from 1843. The story has been redone many times throughout the years. In this retelling, the story is centered around the world of Hollywood. The plot follows Ebony Scrooge, a famous pop singer known for her bad attitude and mistreatment of others and her demanding ways. She was a part of a famous singing group named Desire in the 1980s. After one of her groupmates passes away, she abandons the remaining member for solo success. She quickly learns how her bad behavior affects others when she receives a ghostly visit from the dead friend and ex-bandmate, the night of Christmas Eve. This visitation is followed by a series of others throughout the night. The original, A Christmas Carol, sometimes referred to as just Scrooge, tells the story of an elderly man named Ebenezer Scrooge who is known for hating Christmas. He is visited in spirit by his former business partner, Jacob Marley, who is now deceased. The spirits of Christmas past, present, and future also show up. In the original story, Scrooge is described as a miser who hoards money. Although Ebony is not frugal with her own needs and wants, in A Diva's Christmas Carol, she does shortchange her staff. She does not allow them separate hotel rooms, proper pay, or time off. She does this all while being high maintenance and demanding luxury items for herself. Essentially, A Diva's Christmas Carol is the female version of A Christmas Carol. For instance, instead of being invited to dinner by a nephew named Fred, the Diva Scrooge gets a visit from her niece Olivia. Instead of Ebenezer Scrooge, the name is changed to Ebony Scrooge. Instead of Jacob Marley, it becomes Marley Jacob. Instead of Bob Cratchit being an underpaid employee of Scrooge's business, he becomes Ebony's underpaid manager and ex-boyfriend. These small changes were brilliant to better suit Ebony Scrooge's gender. Contrary to the original, there was no ghost of Christmas future. It seems like the visitations were over until she's shown her future through the television. The TV almost acts as the ghost of Christmas future. By the end of the tale, Scrooge is transformed into a gentle, soft-hearted man, in this case woman. Vanessa Williams was the first and only consideration for the role of Ebony Scrooge. Williams was a famous pop singer in real life with several platinum and gold albums already under her belt. Ironically, she released her first studio album in 1988, just like the character in the movie. Williams originally rose to fame as a pageant girl in the early to mid 80s. She released multiple hit records in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, topping the pop, dance, R&B, and adult contemporary charts. Prior to this role, Vanessa Williams was best known as Dr. Lee Cullen in the film Eraser, Terry Joseph in Soul Food, and Carmen Vasquez in Shaft. She also performed on Broadway, TV movies, and children's films such as 1999's The Adventures of Elmo and Grouchland. Canadian actress Vanessa Morgan portrayed Ebony during her childhood years. She was eight years old at the time and this was her first acting role. She would later go on to be on popular television shows on the Disney Channel, The CW, and MTV. Teenage Ebony was played by 15-year-old Helena Alexis Seymour. Seymour got her first break in the industry at just 10 years old doing commercials. Brian McNamara played the part of Bob Cratchit, Ebony's overworked manager and former boyfriend. His wife is displeased with his demanding work schedule due to the failing health of their young son. McNamara's first role was in 1984 in the film The Flamingo Kid, 
A few years later, in 1987, he played Dean Carney in Billionaire's Boy Club. This role earned him a Golden Globe nomination. Throughout the 80s and 90s, he appeared in numerous films such as Caddyshack 2, Arachnophobia, Mystery Date, and When the Party's Over. The part of Jacob Marley was played by Rosanda Thomas, better known as Chili from the group TLC. This was Thomas's first major role in a film. Prior to that, she had minor roles in films such as House Party 3, Have Plenty, Love Song, and Snow Day. In 2000, Chili was at the height of her career. TLC had become the best-selling girl group of all time and were nominated for eight Grammy Awards that year, taking home three. The group scored nine top ten pop hits, including four number ones. Chili used her experiences from her own group and incorporated them into the role. The Ghost of Christmas Past is played by Kathy Griffin. Kathy Griffin rose to fame in the 1990s as a stand-up comedian and actress. She frequently guest starred on the NBC sitcom Suddenly Susan, which aired from 1996 to 2000. She landed a myriad of small roles in television shows and films such as The Freshmen of Bel Air, ER, Seinfeld, and The X-Files. In 1996, she appeared on HBO's Comedy Half Hour, which gave comedians a 30-minute televised set at the Fillmore in San Francisco. Two years later, she landed her own HBO stand-up special titled Hot Cup of Talk. She became known for her trash-talking style and mocking of celebrities, although she stated that it was all in fun and that she is a fan of most of the celebrities she criticizes. The Ghost of Christmas Present is played by John Taylor, who was a bass guitarist for the Grammy Award-winning group Duran Duran. British natives, the group became popular worldwide during the early days of MTV in the 1980s. Their videos became partly responsible for the success of MTV while helping expose them to a global audience. The group sold over 100 million records and scored 18 U.S. hit singles, 9 gold records, and 6 platinum albums. Princess Diana even declared Duran Duran her favorite group during the 1980s. John Taylor left the group in 1997 to pursue a solo career. In 1999, Taylor started acting, and he played Clive in the independent film Sugartown. The following year, he played Dick in Four Dogs Playing Poker and Keith Rich Rock in the Flintstones' Viva Rock Vegas before A Diva's Christmas Carol aired in December. The role of Olivia, Ebony's niece and only living family member, is played by Amanda Bruegel. Her first acting role was just one year prior in the film Vendetta. Terry Freeman, the third member of Ebony's former band, is played by jazz vocalist Stephanie Biddle. Biddle appeared in the film Crunch, The Moderns, and The Whole Nine Yards prior to filming A Diva's Christmas Carol. Filming for A Diva's Christmas Carol began in June of 2000. The shoots called for 12 to 13 hour days over the course of four months and filming wrapped in October. The script was written by Richard Shankman, who also directed the picture. He received a call from executive Lawrence Elasnik, who wanted to turn the story of Scrooge into a pop diva. Shankman says Ebony's diva scenarios were based on real life experiences. For example, the scene where Ebony has things velcroed to her assistant's vest, ready for her use, comes from a famous comedic actress. The film makes references to pop culture to make the story contemporary and believable to the audience. Williams' character compares herself to other pop divas such as Celine Dion, Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey, who were the most popular female vocalists of the time. The film incorporated a segment when Ebony was shown her future through a Behind the Music special. Behind the Music was a show that VH1 produced that premiered in the late 90s. The show was a docuseries that profiled the lives of musicians and their road to success. The fictional Behind the Music segment in the film remained true to the real program to the point that it looked almost real. The segment featured cameos from Nile Rodgers and Brian McKnight. The film also included a counterfeit version of Good Morning America entitled AM America. Vanessa Williams also recorded brand new songs which were featured in the movie. The film used special effects technology to create illusions that would otherwise be dangerous or impossible. Computer generated imagery or CGI was used to create the illusion of being transported through time. Vanessa Williams spent hours in front of a green screen to make it seem like she was flying. The editors later erased out the green screen and replaced it with the desired background image. In this case, the background image created a vortex. Erasing the green screen makes it seem like the characters are in an alternative world. 
If you were wondering, the color green is used because it's the furthest color from the human skin tone. The color green contrasts so much with human skin tones, it makes it easy to erase the background. A color like red would be harder to use because people have red undertones in their skin. If other colors were used, a person's skin would pick up some of the fictional background image making them look translucent. Williams was used to the demanding work of being strapped to a harness since she had prior experience when she had to do it eight times a week for Broadway. We can all walk away from this film learning why it's important to treat others kind during the holiday season. You never know what people are going through. Ebony Scrooge eventually learned how to treat people, but through the story we can also learn why people like Ebony act the way they do. This concludes this retrospective review. Thank you for watching.